Welcome back. If you are a high school senior or your son or daughter is a high school senior, this is supposed to be a magically exciting time, right? Looking ahead to college. Instead, it's probably very stressful for you taking a look at applying to colleges, getting in, paying for it right now. So let's get you some help and some answers on how to do that during COVID-19 here. And we have Ibrahim Farad, the founder of Farad Education here with us this morning. Thank you because so many people have been reaching out to us saying, what do we do? Do. So the first thing I want to ask you is, you know, SATs are kind of out of the door here and we're throwing away the old rules of how to apply. So can you talk to our students about how to stand up, stand out on their applications right now since their scores really aren't the way to do it? Good morning. Good morning. College admissions uh, have been looking at the same seven factors even before COVID-19. Uh, SAT and ACT scores was one of these uh, factors. GPA and rank and curriculum rigor like APs, advanced classes, honors classes, relevant activities and leadership, meaning things that students do in and outside of school. Ability to pay even has been a factor and strong recommendation letters from teachers, counselors, as well as the college essay quality that they write. So when you look at these seven factors and if you remove the SAT, ACT as a requirement, which by the way, not, not many colleges have done it just yet. It's just only about 1,200 colleges have been test optional before COVID-19 and just recently 300 colleges just added to the list. So if you remove SAT and ACT as a factor, then you need to add other, you know, a more weight into other factors. And let's talk about paying for it. A lot of the parents um, already filled out the FAFSA, the application for student aid so they can get their scholarships and grant money, but a lot has changed. Now some parents have been laid off, the income level's not the same. Do you have any advice on how to pursue that or, or do parents even need to do anything at this point? So what many parents have been doing, which is a big no-no, is re-completing re the FAFSA. That's a big no. We recommend strongly against it. Colleges uh, recommend strongly against it, as well as the federal government. So what you can do if your situation has changed drastically financially, you need to call the financial aid office and send an email to, to them explaining your specific situation and say, if you're qualified for a certain amount of dollars to be able to attend this particular college, that situation has changed. They'll probably have you fill out additional forms that they require, the college requires itself, and then you might maybe qualify for additional aid. Okay, and then most of the, or one of the exciting parts of when you're going to college is you get in the car with your parents, you drive up to the campus, you take that tour, see if it's a good fit. What do you know about the virtual tours? Is that something that's happening right now? And, and how should parents and students take advantage of that so they still know if this is the right school for them? In fact, virtual tours have been a popular thing before COVID-19, uh, especially for families who couldn't afford to travel uh, miles and, uh, you know, try to try to visit a college. So uh, virtual tours have been popular. It's been over a thousand colleges now offer virtual tours and that number is growing day by day. Um, Uvisit.com as well as campusreel.org, R-E-E-L.org provides over a thousand colleges uh, in virtual visits. You can actually watch real videos, chat with students live, as well as the alumni, and get 360 degree view of the campus, the residence halls, the classrooms, and most importantly, you get a feel for the campus. Individual colleges also offer virtual tours, which actually is a really important point because college admissions does it take into account whether you've uh, shown some sort of interest to them while, by visiting or virtually visiting. So if you sign up to for these virtual visits and information sessions and then actually attend these virtual sessions, you're counted as present and that counts as a big advantage in your college admissions applications as well. Good tips there. And um, speaking of online, we only have a few minutes with you, but you actually have a free webinar. We put up your website underneath uh, your picture there so that people can head over there for a webinar on Monday so they can learn more about the application process. Thanks for waking up with us and giving us that info. A lot of